Hi everyone, so today we're going to be talking about loops within the EECS 1021 programming class, object-oriented programming from sensors to actuators, how we use Java to get stuff done. All right, so we're going to start off with an intro to loops. As always, I like to point out that there are some good follow-up materials or books that you can take a look at, references you can get at. Uh, there's the Java 8 Fundamentals book that's available as a free ebook at the university library. This is the link to it, and inside of chapter 5, there's a good discussion about the for and while looping statements. All right, so motivation behind loops. We often, in engineering applications, want to repeat similar actions a bounded number of times. Okay, so for a fixed number of times. That's basically what we're talking about. So, for instance, we might want to say the, uh, the word hello world a uh, hundred times, or if, if you watch The Simpsons, you know, when they when Bart has to write in detention the same thing over and over again on the blackboard. You could also want to uh, find out the maximum number of value in a list of numbers, and so you'd have to traverse through that list of numbers over and over and over again. That's actually a really common thing to do. You may also wish to repeat similar actions under certain, but not other, circumstances. Okay, so for instance, uh, you want to let a user keep entering uh, in values while they're trying to calculate uh, uh, a boss uh, body mass uh, index uh, until they enter the, the word quit in, in the in interface. Another one, maybe more relevant to this particular class, is you would want to water any time the soil for your plant is dry, but quit if the emergency panic button on your Arduino board is pressed. So. Loops allow us to repeat similar actions either for a specific or specified number of times or until a specified condition holds true. Okay, so these, these are the two sort of general conditions under which loops work. Here's an example in sort of the Java world. What we have here is um, a code block and you can see that there's a for loop because it's uh, described by the keyword for, and inside of the parentheses here and here, we have the conditions under which the for loop works. We say that uh, there is a an incrementing uh, variable. Okay, this is an indexing variable that changes value starting at zero, and then every time it runs through, it increases in value using the plus plus right here until such time as i is less than 100. Okay, so we'll keep going every time it goes through the loop. So it'll go i is equal to 0, i is equal to 1, i is equal to 2, i is equal to 3, over and over and over again until we get to i is equal to 100, at which point we don't want to do the looping anymore. Each time we go through this, so in the center right here, here, and there in the center of the loop, in the center of the loop, in the center of the loop, we want to print something out. And we want to print out welcome to Java. And we'll do this 100 times. Okay. There's another way of visualizing this using flowcharts. So we'll start with, with the one, the flowchart right over here. This is the more general one. We start, okay, so this is a start up here. And we go to an initial action. Then from the initial action, we go down into a decision diamond right here. And that diamond is basically a question. You can see the, the question mark right there. And that question has one of two answers associated with it, false or true. Now you could put the true here, you could put false there, you could do, you could flip it around, it doesn't matter, there has to be two branches, okay? A true branch and a false branch. If the answer to the question is true, numerically that'd be like a one, then we execute a particular statement inside of the loop body. If it's found to be false, we skip over that and we go to the end. Okay, so this is the end right here, end or the stop. Now, if we found it to be true, we executed the statement inside of the loop, we then go to some action that's taken after each iteration, each loop through. All right, now from the perspective of the code that we have up here, here's it implemented in the flowchart. So we start up here. Okay, and the start is above the four. Start right here. And the end is down here. It's below the four. So this is the end right here. We start. We say i is equal to zero. This is the variable called i. It's an integer. 
is defined right here inside of the parentheses, inside of the brackets. Now, once that has been initialized, then we go into a decision tree or decision diamond right here. And that decision diamond asks, is i less than 100? And then there's a question mark right there. And that's this part right here. Is i less than 100? If it's false, that is, it's over, it's 100 or more, then we skip to the end and we go to the end. We jump out of the loop. Okay, so we bypass that curly brace there and that curly brace there. If it's true, on the other hand, then we go inside the loop, braces, okay, the curly brace there and the curly brace there, and we take a look at the statements that are inside. And here we can see that there's a system out print line, welcome to Java. That's what this is right here. Once that's printed out to the screen, then we go to this action that's taken after an iteration, which is this part right here, this part right here. And then we go back up to the top here and we ask the question again. So this part is done at the very end of a particular loop. This part is done the very first time the loop is about to run. And this part right here is done each time the loop runs at the beginning. Okay. It's that diamond right here. And that's basically what a for loop looks like. Mm -hmm.